Welcome to Gabe's Cave. I'm Marty. I'm your host and my co-host, Deadpool, which for once has shut up. I can't believe it, but he's finally shut up. He has nothing to say to you, Deadpool. All right, good. Hey, thanks for joining us today on uh, this Wednesday's episode of Meet the Artist. I'll talk about a uh, our special guest in a minute. First of all, let's thank our sponsors, RPGHiring.com. Thank you so much for all that you do. Uh, there's, we couldn't do any of this without you. You've always been there for us, and we appreciate it very much. If you're looking for a new career in Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, uh, Kansas, Missouri, or Tennessee, or anywhere in the nation, go to RPGHiring.com. If you know somebody who's looking for a new career, Definitely check them out. Building people, changing lives. I've seen so many lives change from this company. So thank you again for uh, always sponsoring us. Let's talk about some events real quick before we get before we get to our our, our guest. Uh, OKC Pop Culture uh, com- uh, Pop Culture Convention June the twenty fourth and twenty fifth. We're going to be there doing the panels and doing interviews. Make sure you stop by and see us. We'll have free gifts and things like that for you. We'll also have a fun time. So uh, definitely stop by OKC Horicon August the 5th and 6th. Make sure that you stop by and see us again. We're going to be doing the panels there and, and interviews. We'll have our full setup at both con cons. Uh, and then Cowtown Comic Con in Fort Worth, Texas, September 30th through October the 1st. It's going to be a phenomenal show. It's one of our... Uh, uh, less stressful shows. We know everybody. It's like Cheers. I've always said that, you know, because it's where everybody knows your name. They know us real well, and we're just good friends with all the guys there at Cowtown Comic Con. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead and give away last week's uh, Meet the Artist Shane McCormick's cards. Shane done a phenomenal job. I know uh, they were like all animated Batman, phenomenal. I know you guys are all going to love it. So, uh, uh, congratulations to the winner. forget last place loot box winner i know i've been packing some of the loot boxes here lately and i'll tell you what it's uh it's it's crazy it's crazy what uh what we give away all right today's topic meet the artist our special guest sammy gomez how you doing sammy i'm doing well how are you i am absolutely incredible highly favored blessed what do you want to say i'm it's just amazing to be alive it is. <laughs> I let's, agree, Sammy. Let's let's just talk a little about a little bit about you, and and let's get to know you, because that's what these interviews really are. You know, we're you 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 jumped on, and we definitely appreciate you uh, jumping on uh, to our adventure. You know, we uh, we love uh, artists. We've always we've always built this whole show really around artists and how we really got started. You know, and so um, well, just tell us a little bit about you, Sammy. How long you been in the business? How long you been drawing? How long you been doing art cards? Well, um, I'm from Chicago. Um, I've been uh, drawing since a uh, very young age. Um, started picking up drawing when uh, I was, I don't know, very young. Um, I want to say three, four, five years old. Um, you know, mom would come home with crayons. I'd be home. Um, just started drawing that way. Um, As I got into fourth and fifth grade, um, you know, that's really when the, the, I guess, you know, it was noticeable that I had something, you know, there. 
and kind of developed it. Um, all through high school, um, actually um, was going to go to uh, UIC to, to be an architect. And then I ended up taking graphic design. Um, so I, I've changed kind of a little bit what, you know, what I was interested in um, throughout the years. Um, I did some illustration. I've done some independent comics in the 90s. Um, got away from it for a bit. Um, I was actually not drawing for nearly 10 years once I got married and the kids started to come along. Um, and then uh, just out of fate, you know, when, um, you know, a, a company that I was working at happened to downsize, I found some time to get back into it and um, started to, uh, to, you know, notice people were doing sketch cards. And I thought it was interesting because back in the 90s, I used to be a baseball card collector, a football card collector. Um, I worked in a comic book store at the time. So this new thing with sketch cards was pretty, pretty interesting to me. Um, so I asked around, um, talked to other artists, um, and did my first set with Rittenhouse, which was a Star Trek Deep Space Nine set. And um, that was kind of my my entry point, my my foot through the door, and uh, learned really quick that uh, when you see the number of rejects coming through a set, you realize you need to pick it up a little bit. <laughs> so that was my first set that kind of like I think maybe a third of the cards were approved, um, and 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 were you know put in packs and that sort of thing, and then I got all the rejects back. But uh, a few years after that, I ended up with Tops doing my first Star Wars set. And um, and then it just kind of bloomed from there. Um, did a lot of Star Wars sets. And then after a while, um, I wanted to kind of switch things up. Did baseball for a couple of years. I kind of want to get back into that. And, um, and I'm doing work for other sets too now. Um, Right now, I'm actually um, doing a lot of catch-up work because um, I was out for a bit. Uh, I had a death in the family last year, and it really hit me hard. So um, I was out of it for a few months, um, and I'm kind of picking it up again. And uh, it's going well. All right. Well, well, let me just ask a couple of questions because you – uh, during during what you were saying, you, you used to – you've done some comics back in the 90s, right? Yes. Who, who, who did you do comics where you said some uh, independents, right? Yeah, um, I was working at a comic book store. And um, <clears throat> during our slow times, um, I'd sketch and I'd draw. And people would come in and um, see what I was doing and um, saw the artwork around the store. Because I was actually doing ceiling tiles. I was airbrushing the walls. I was pretty much doing everything in there. And um, I was doodling. And a customer came in, and um, he really liked my sketches. And so he said, hey, would you be interested in doing a comic? And um, it was called Mavens. Um, I have a copy somewhere in the house. I think it's in the garage. Um, there weren't a whole lot of copies printed of it. Um, but what was funny was that was another kind of you know, kick in the butt. Um, because illustrating a full comic is way harder than I thought it was going to be. And uh, it was a real learning experience um, doing, you know, 28, 32 pages. I can't remember what it was, you know, penciling, inking, that sort of thing. And that was around the time I met my wife. So in hindsight, I wish I had put like all my energy into doing the work. Um, it was a real learning experience. And when I look at it now, it's like, ugh, it, it looks terrible. Have, um, have, you, have you done any more since? I did a comic for um, another person who was in the business. He was an inker. Um, it was a Red Fox bio comic. Um, it was about his life. And it was, you know, there's some Sanford and Son in there and his, his comedy 
early on and you know early career that one turned out really well um it was a black and white you know comic did you um, did, did you have the picture of one of my famous quotes he said don't just don't, don't just wash your butt wash oh. your butt off. <laughs> that, in the comic. that was covered in there was it in there oh my gosh that's so funny that's one of my favorite all-time things yeah it was covered in, that was a few that was quite a few years back too <laughs> that's so funny and so knowing how hard illustrating is and you know knowing that you know you need to really it's a full-time gig so you really you know if you're working it's hard to come home and sit down and draw pages and you know and especially when it comes to likenesses you really want to get you know people's faces correct you want to get backgrounds correct you want to get you know you want to make the pages stand out um so it's kind of one of those things where I jumped from that to to airbrushing to painting to you know I, I couldn't quite really find a, a niche you know I was just trying different things and th again that's when that thing came along I and, think uh, if I think if I was an artist which I'm definitely not I have none of that talent but if I was an artist today I would be I would want to be an interior artist I know what that is I know how hard it is but yeah. here's the thing about interior artists to me cover artists come and go i mean right. there, there's very few cover artists i mean you got your you got your big name people but you go back from the 90s the 80s when i started collecting comics and you look at the cover artists that have come and gone that people don't even know who they are you know what i mean they just one shots yeah. it's kind of like uh just like the the 80s uh, bands you know a one, a one hit wonder and um and then they come and go but interior artists are still getting paid on comics you know that's where the residual income is and and i just i don't understand why people aren't going after the uh the pencils and the layouts and the and the inkers and and i would be i would want to be in the interior artist industry to me yeah yeah and that was kind of that was one of my dreams and you know i'm happy that i did a couple books got it out of the way experienced it um you know i got to give a lot of credit to those that do this full time i mean it's a lot of work and um you know i do like illustration still i do a lot of pencil work um um when I when I when I do sketch cards, I kind of switched it up. I, it, it kind of varies from set to set. Like I'll get the cards in hand, and then I'll be like, "Okay, I want to do this. I'm feeling pencils," and then I'll just do that set in pencils. Then I'll get the next set in. Oh, I feel like painting, so I want to do the entire set, you know, fully painted. Or you know, it kind of varies from set from 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 uh, set to set. Um, I don't really have, I think that's kind of what makes it hard for people to identify my style. Um, Cause I, I like switching it up every time I'm, I'm doing a project. Um, I, I, I get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. So sure. a lot of experimenting when, when I, when I do my work and like with your cards, um, I really loved the cardstock. They're like little mini canvases. So I wanted to paint those. You know, I, I goes in hand, and I felt they would the paint would go really well on those. Um, there are sets that we get from other companies that are really flimsy cardstock, and just makes it really hard to to get what you know what you want to do on them. Um, unless you know you're one of the more talented artists, um, they can work on anything. But um, but uh, I, I kind of pick and choose what materials to use when when I get a given set in hand. I knew you painted these uh, a lot. We have several artists that paint on our cards because they, they say the exact same thing you say. They, they love our card stock. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you, you know, when somebody paints um, on these cards and, and they come in, I mean, these are like little masterpieces to me. I, <laughs> I, I think I tell everybody, you know, I feel guilty. I know we pay more than most card companies. Um but I feel guilty with what we pay you because these are so, so good. They're 
incredible. And, and, you know, if, if I was going to keep them, I would pay you more, but we're giving them away. You know what I mean? It's, it's a little bit different and I'm not selling $300 boxes to give away us, uh, you know, an art card. So, uh, it's just something that we've done and, and we, and, and I'll tell you, so looking at your cards, I can tell that, you are around my age because of some of the some of the people that you've drawn like some of the planet of the apes i i haven't seen i've I've seen some planet of the apes uh i've seen caesar and all that stuff but i look at these two right here and these are from the the original planet of the apes oh yeah they're they're really really good really good I i love being able to kind of do a variety of things um instead of just one topic and you kind of stick to it um you, you know you gave us the ability to kind of pick and choose what we wanted to do as so long as it you know fits the criteria and um wow, yeah i kind of crazy. wanted to do it <laughs> i love them and um and i i love i'm just a big sci-fi and horror fan in general um so any chance to kind of draw those characters you know i'll take it um so yeah, that was fun. So this is your first time to do a set with us. I think I've seen your work in in baseball. Have you done you've done baseball cards, right? I did. No, okay. I, did. I, I I think I've seen some of your work in baseball. I don't know how you found us. How how did you find us? Um, I think through my other artist buddies. I have a lot of. I've been fortunate, you know, and I think because you know we've been home for the last few years, um, I've gotten to know quite a few artists. And many of them I call my friends. And um, um, through them, I think they've reached out and said, hey, Sammy, you know, you want to check this out? This is pretty cool. You know, why don't you contact them and see if, you know, you can get involved. And uh, I think I reached out a few years ago uh, for one of your earlier sets. Um, and um, I think that's how we, we get in touch. Okay, great. That's great. I'm I'm really glad you're on board because I'm gonna tell you your work is amazing and so we love it and uh, yeah. So all right, let's talk a little bit about you know the Joker. I know uh, just another iconic character, whether it's uh, you know from uh, the the early six the sixties. Oh to, yeah. To to the two thousands, you know the the twenty twenty. I guess it's whenever it was. Yeah, you know, Joker's always a popular uh, subject for people. So, you know, any chance to draw him as well, I, I I'll take it. Um, I really enjoyed the last movie, um, but I'm also a big Batman sixty six fan too. So, um, absolutely, <laughs> can't go wrong with either one. I think Michael Myers is is always a fan favorite. People love horror, and and you know it's really wild to see how much people do i mean it's crazy there's a lot of horror fans out there a lot of horror fans you got freddie Michael, go ahead Michael's a favorite of mine. um it's funny because when i talk to my other artist friends and we do our art swaps we do trades michael's always one of those characters where i say can you do me a michael you know and and i've gotten quite a few different michaels here from different artists so it's he's one of those fun fun characters to to you know to collect I'm going to I'm going to show this if you can see this. I mean the depth in the mask is I don't know if you can see it but boy it is so cool. You got Freddy Krueger, one of my all-time favorite horror guys. Yeah. I mean, I don't sleep much anymore because of him. Yeah, Freddy's fun. I, mean, I need to do some more horror, I think. Oh, yeah. And then you got this guy here who is oh one, one of the sickest <laughs> superhero I guy. Really, He's a little twisted, a little sick, a little pervert. Yeah. He's a little I bit of everything. I love the boys. Um, Homelanders, you know, one of those characters that catches people's eye. Um the show overall, I love it. Um, I'm, I can't wait for for it to come back on. I think I just read today that they just finished shooting season four, so we'll just see when uh, when the release date is. Yeah, I'm ready for it too. I love it too. I'm I'm big fan, 
big fan of this show here too this this is stranger things correct what's yeah his, what's his name um i forget his name <laughs> it's been a while since i've done these my um, my, I my I wife make of the character i just thought he has a great look um and he's so menacing um last season i thought was one of the better seasons i really loved it oh yeah um, and he was just one of those characters that was like oh yeah i gotta draw him you know what i think they missed i know it's the last part of the last season that we're fixing to watch uh when it comes back out we're going to see the last part of it yeah. but eddie munson was really a great character and we we, oh, yeah. we should have gotten a lot more of him oh yeah i agree he was fun he was fun and i think I have pictures saved. Um, I haven't drawn him yet, but I think um, I think I will be doing it. He was a fun, fun character. This is iconic Catwoman, Michelle Pfeiffer. And, and let me go ahead and tell you, <laughs> Ronnie Crowther. You know Ronnie Crowther? Ronnie, I know, is looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Crowther, here you go, buddy. I, I'm telling you, that's two weeks in a row there's been a Catwoman, and he just he is a, a big Catwoman fan beautiful card when i when i painted that one um i actually had him in mind and i was doing a lot of catch-up work at the time which i still am and so i jumped from set to set you know I'll, I'll stop in the middle of one and do another and that catwoman i was actually planning on doing that for him <laughs> and then i realized i did it on your card stock um, so someone else may win it. Hopefully he wins it. We'll see. Well, you know, we do have, we do have, didn't, didn't you get some um, 10 artist proof cards? Yes. Yeah, I do have artist print cards. See, so. you could have made that for him and, and just did another one. <laughs> I could have done that. That's true. <laughs> I usually put the artist, artist returns aside and just finish up the full sets. And then, um, and then I sometimes forget that I have them. And then I'll, you know, go through a pile and, and see the artist returns and then realize, oh, I should probably get some of these done for people. Then you got the 66 Joker. I can't remember his name. Ain't that terrible? Oh, Cesar Romero. Yeah, Cesar. Yeah, that's right. Now, what's iconic about this person is his mustache. You know, everybody, everybody that paints or draws always make sure that they include the, the line of his mustache because it was always in the, it was always in the series. You know what I'm saying? He always had it. Subtle, yeah. Subtle shade right there. Wonder why he never shaved it. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a picture of him without his mustache, to be honest. So who is your favorite Joker? In order, Ooh. in order, top four. Good question. Uh, let's see. Top four in order. Um, yeah, that's tough. Uh, I want to say, I want to say Jack Nicholson, number one. Um, Heath Ledger, number two. You can, you can, you can flip flop those, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Cesar Romero three and number four. Um, man. Well, I, I guess I'll give it to Joaquin Phoenix Joker as number four. I'm not a fan of the Suicide Squad version of the Joker, though. You're not. I don't, I'm not a fan of that version. I just don't like the look of it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm. I'm with you on that. I, I one or two could have been switched back and forth. Either one, I, I do like. I, I I love Jack Nicholas, and I love uh, I love Heath Ledger. Both of them are great. Then then the '66, and then I would go with with jo Joaquin Phoenix. I know, um, you know, there was it's big controversial between that one and and. But the truth is, is you know, you, you look at the. Uh, I, I I couldn't stand the uh, I couldn't stand the the uh, Suicide Joker. They they just teetotally made that not who he was. Uh, yeah. But this one here, uh, it really hit home in today's yeah. in today's society because the way we live and the way we're raised, you know, um, 
so many broken families. So many people have, and I'm going to go ahead and say this, I would, just about everybody has some kind of mental issue. <laughs> right. I mean, right. they may not show it, but everybody probably suffers from some kind of mental disorder, whether it's, you know, it could be a little, it could be a lot. I mean, uh, I know I do. Uh, I, I suffer from uh, a mental disorder too. I mean, I got OCD. I'm, I'm real, I'm, <laughs> I'm real OCD about things. And, um, and if it's not perfect, then I, you can see why <laughs> I got OCD. I think a lot of artists or creative types, we all have some sort of, you know, we, we all have like a, a thing or two, you know, we, we want to be liked. We want to, you know, we want to pursue our passions. We want to, you know, do, do well and, and, and create great art. And we're, we're all kind of picky about what we do. And um, a lot of us jump from one type of thing, art to a different type of art, you know, it's, so there, yeah, there's a lot of mental, you know, kind of issues going on there, but <laughs> the critique, think, the critiquing that y'all do on yourself, you're, you're harder on yourself than yeah. most collectors. Yeah. Honestly, what I feel about that is I feel like I've done a lot of card sets, but I feel like I haven't done a card set that I'm a hundred percent happy with. I always feel like there's a card or two or, or something that, you know, would have just taken it up another notch. Um, so yeah, I do critique myself a lot. And I think that's why I switch materials a lot too. I'm, I'm always testing something out. I want to do the best that I can. Um, and I want to have fun while I'm doing them too. Um, well, Sammy, yeah, th I, these are these uh, you, you you've done perfect on these. OK, <laughs> these are perfect. I don't know what you could have done. The only thing you could have done better is sent these to me. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me have them. But I, I can't. They're perfect. I mean, really, they're really, really, really good. And I'll tell you this. Uh, it's going to be hard besides Ronnie Crowther. He, you know what he's going to pick. But besides Ronnie Crowther, it's going to be hard to pick these. I'm telling you now, every one of them are perfect. I mean, they're amazing. I appreciate that. I, I you know, it's still, um, even years later, doing, I've been doing this since 2018, so it's not that long, but it's, it's been a few years. Even now, it's so challenging drawing on two and a half by three and a half size, you know, you know, canvas. <laughs> it's always a challenge because you, you want to, you know, make sure that you're, you're putting in all the detail you need, but you want to make sure it looks like the person it's supposed to, and you want to get the right colors in there and you want each car to stand out on its own. And um, I've done comic book covers that went a little smoother, you know, cause you, you have, you know, you have a larger canvas to work with. Right. But working on cards, even now, you know, I, I don't know if anyone really gets used to it. Um, maybe some people do, <laughs> but I still have a hard time drawing at that scale. It's, it's, it's a challenge each time, you know, a new set comes in. I, I'm like thinking ahead, what am I going to do? What materials am I going to use? Um, and, and, you know, am I going to be able to draw, you know, this big, <laughs> all the way through are you are, are you open for commission um i'm currently catching up on a lot of cards that i owe people <laughs> but i am do i do commissions um what's funny is i bought a box of cardstock for just my own art they're all blank there's no no logo on the front or anything but i find that when i do my own art on my own cardstock they don't really sell but when I do artwork on other people's cards, and, you know, and mainly, I guess, because there's a logo or some sort of markings on the front of the card, they tend to do a lot better. Um, but yeah, I mean, soon I'll be taking commissions again. I want to make sure I, I, you know, catch up and, and get a hold of people. And I owe, I owe a lot of people cards and I've been promising to get back to them. And, um, 
I've been feeling that itch again. It took a while. Um, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, how long does it take you to pump out one of these masterpieces? I'm a slow artist. <laughs> so um, doing the drawing and the layout for me um, takes a couple hours. And then when I start doing the painting, um, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll tend to take hours and hours and hours, and then I'll put it aside and I'll start the next card. And then I'll come back to that card after I've done another card because I want to do more touch-ups. So it's kind of hard to say how long each card is. I mean, it could be five, six hours. It could be days because <laughs> I'll put a card aside, not look at it, and then realize not there yet i need to add more to it i'm gonna, I'm gonna show the crow right here this is the last one i don't think i showed i love the crow too the, the expression that you caught on brandon lee's face here is priceless man i mean it is absolutely mm -hmm. priceless i can't believe how good it looks and <laughs> he's another one of if you notice a lot of the when, when i have the chance to do my own cards you, you'll see a lot of 80s, 90s, and some 70s in there sometimes. Um, just the things that I grew up with, things that interest me, things that, you know, influenced me. Um, you know, I'll do current, you know, stuff too, depending on what I like. But um, if I have my own way, it'll be things that I grew up with. You know, those will be the things I draw first. So how has it been working with us? Oh, I love it. I love it. I want to do more. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're you're wanting to get on Series 5? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to be working on those pretty soon. In the next month or so, I'm going to be sending them out. So uh, uh, I, I'm telling you what, I love your card. So. And you're you're pleasant you're pleasant to work with and, and very nice. And we appreciate you, you joining us on our adventure. Um, I guess people can catch you on your social uh, which is uh, what do you use Facebook I, I know I can't I'm remember pretty much Sammy G23 or Sammy G2323 at msn.com that's my email um, Sammy Gomez on Facebook and I think I'm Sammy G2323 on Instagram you know it, all, all your information will be down in the bottom uh, in the description of the video if anybody out there wants a commission from Sammy uh, keep in touch with him. He may not be open right now, but uh, definitely keep keep uh, following him. And uh, I'm I'm just going to tell you the the ten lucky winners that win these cards are going to be uh, really really happy. And uh, hey, you know I I definitely would. I definitely would. Well, uh, thanks again for joining us on our adventure. Uh, you know we're we're. I think our Kickstarter has just finished. Uh, we have a, a new Kickstarter for Gabe's Cave Adventures, or the Adventures of Gabe's Cave, The Legend of Maynard Lake. It's our first actual comic book uh, of Gabe's Cave. It's really cool that we're just, you know, hey, we're just having fun, uh, living life, and, and just having fun with uh, all the people who, who have joined part of our family, and it's been a lot of fun. So That's what it's all about having fun we'll also remember tomorrow night we call it gabe's cave after dark with uncle nasty make sure that you uh jump on board uh seven o'clock after dark with uncle nasty uh dollar auctions so if you're into auctions and stuff like that uncle nasty does a phenomenal job sometimes there's uncle don julio with us and uh and sometimes deadpool comes along too i mean yeah <laughs> well sammy thanks. thanks thanks for coming on board with us uh we appreciate you very much and you know wish you all the luck in the world and in the future and and we'll see you down the road okay thank you so much for having me i appreciate it i don't get to do this very often so it's kind of a new thing um but it was fun i enjoyed it yeah well, we we really did too all right cave dwellers we'll see you later <laughs>